A freshman from Orlando, Florida, number four, Adam Chenny. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hope you're all doing well. Um, this is another episode of Chani Talks. So uh, I'm just going to call it that for now. Maybe I'll change the name later. But uh, this is where I'm going to go ahead and talk with friends, family, coaches, uh, soccer players about different topics. So it's not like going to this um, series where I talk about a player's journey and where they are now and how they got there. This is a little bit different where we'll talk about a topic. Last episode, I spoke with Bernardo a good friend of mine, and we spoke about how to become a sports journalist. This time we're here with Coach Ashton Baptiste, one of, uh, one of my old coaches back when I used to play club over at ACYS Spirit United. And today's topic is how to become a coach, professional coach, semi-professional coach, and the licenses, everything you have to do, the process. So I guess I'll give it to you, Coach, and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and we can get started. Uh, thank you again, Adam. Um, yeah, my name is Ashton Baptiste. Um, I was in the past one of Adam's coaches in his development and him becoming the soccer player that he is today. Um, I'm originally from Trinidad. I'm part of the Trinidad and Tobago uh, North American scouting program. And basically that's what it says it is. We go around the country uh, finding um, players of Trinidad parentage to um, hopefully come back and if they're good enough to play for Trinidad and Tobago's, you know, uh, team and program. Um, that being said, currently I work for an academy here in Orlando. It's called GGS um, Academy, uh, which is run by um, Marcos Machado, the ex-goalkeeper coach of Orlando City Pro Side, and also his son Marconi. Um, I've been there for three years. Prior to that, I was at ACYS, where Adam and I met. Um, and I was there for seven years. And um, a year before that, I was at uh, what's known as GPS today, but um, basically the name at that time was FC America. And um, from 2010 to about 2017, I worked in different capacities for the Orlando City Pro side. I had a short stint with the youth side, working with um, the youth program as far as Super Y. Uh, goes uh, along with other coaches um, from ACYS. Um, so most of my experience with Orlando City has been on the pro side, working with camps, clinics. Um, I've worked with uh, Rob Valentino and Kieran Bernard and um, uh, uh, Lou Holden, all these guys I had the opportunity and pleasure to work with in camps. I've worked with Paulina, I've worked with uh, Tony Presley, I've worked with Christian Edmonds, um, again on the women's side. Um, for those of you early in the Orlando City Pride days, I've worked also with, uh, um, oh my God, she's still going to kill me that I, <laughs> her name slips me now. Um, Jasmine Spencer. Sorry, Jazz, no disrespect. <laughs> I'm getting old. Um, but yeah, um, love Jazz as a player and definitely uh, uh, she will turn out to be, um, just like you're trying to be, Adam, a very good coach. Um, she's good and she's detailing, putting information based on her explaining experience and her experience going back out to um the younger developing players. And that's, to me, that's the most important thing. You have to coach, uh, coaching is not, don't look to get rich coaching. Coaching is a job of passion. You can make, you can make money and you can get a paycheck and so forth and so on. So most of the grassroots coaches, most of the developmental coaches, even if you're going to an academy or MLS team, there's only the top coaches in the MLS make money and the top coaches in in, in, in what we look at on TV, the Barcelonas, the, the uh, Liverpools and stuff. But they are coaches part of the staff that's not making that big money. And they, they're the ones really in charge of developing the talent. So I want to put that disclaimer out there. If, you know, and yeah, It's not an easy job. As, as you know, Adam, as a player, it's not an easy job. You have, you have anywhere from 18 
to 22 to sometimes 30 different personalities to deal with. And you're trying to bring all those personalities into one and make them unified and make them one entity working together, playing together, respecting each other. So um, most of the challenges I found as a coach was not so much coaching the game, but the philosophy, the discipline, everything else behind the scenes that people don't see and think, okay, that's a great team. Look how they play. But behind how they play, getting players to respect each other, um, follow the coaching philosophy, giving the coach what he wants, playing through a system, being disciplined to be a player in the system and not trying to think you are the team. You are, mm -hmm. you are everything. Right, um, right. right. Yes. So um, there's a lot of philosophy and a whole lot of discipline and a whole lot of patience mm -hmm. um, as well. Because sometimes in a team, the coach will pick a player, but the team might not like that player or respect the player, but the coach might see something in that player that given the time and the development, that player turns out to be a better player than the so-called star player mm -hmm. at, at some point in time. And um, me being in youth, youth soccer, more the grassroots side of things, I see that a lot where parents bring, a, bring a, their child to a, a, a club or to a team. Oh, my child is great, and, you know, but based on what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, based you're the parent. Based, based on what? What is your I credentials see. for evaluating your son or daughter? What have they experienced? You can't say your son or your daughter is the best where they only played in your neighborhood league. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. You know, yeah. so those are like the different challenges a coach has to go through uh, all the different personalities, like you said, and as well as the parents uh, in the grassroots and the youth leagues. And so um, I guess we can start off with uh, what do you think is the first step for a person like me? I'm in a situation of I'm playing college soccer right now. And my goal after uh, playing college soccer is to go and do my best in the pro game. And after that, get into uh, uh, the coaching uh, side of things. So that's what my goal is. What do you think I should be doing now um, as a freshman going into my sophomore year um, to prepare myself in the future and get into the coaching system? Well, that's why I put out that disclaimer first. Understand what you're getting into. For sure. I definitely know that coaching, you know, <laughs> you know I, I, I've, I've seen the salaries, you know, coaches can make, you know, between $40,000 a year all the way up to you know, two, three hundred thousand, obviously, depending where you are. And right. so I know, I understand that, you know, that's something that's not going to get me a lot of money. But, you know, that's not something I'm chasing. If I wanted to make money, I'd probably get into real estate, the stock market. But that's not right. my passion. I just love soccer. And I want to do my best in the pro game, as well as get into the coaching system in the future. And, you know, I understand that there's not a lot of money to be made there. But as long as I'm happy, then I know I'm doing the right thing. So that's why I think right. it's good to get an understanding of um, now, if I want to be a coach, what is the process that I'm going to face in the next few months, next few years, and how should I prepare myself for that? Well, good. Um, as long as everyone understands that, um, because I see a lot of coaches go through the process, become that licensed coach, have the playing experience, have the coach, and then quit because they didn't understand all the other pieces. So that's why I put that out there first before I get into what you need to do and the license. That's, to me, that's the easy part. You know what I mean? Yeah, but getting your mindset right and wrapped around about that road you're about to go down and don't have a glorified expectation of what a coach is or supposed to be, okay? Um, that being said, um, of course, learn your craft um, as a player understand different roles of a player on the field like you play in the left back correct right back right back right back right back right back okay right back position so don't only learn what a right back does um understand what a center back does understand that play in front of you that outside mid you know attacking mid defensive mid. understand all the positions because when you coach and this is what happens with a lot of players who become coaches they have played the game as a player so long when they become a game, when they become a coach, they have a one dimensional view of the game. Okay. And sometimes that's when coaches are making certain decisions. You are looking at that same decision through a player's eyes. 
not to what coach is. Coach has to look at 22 players on the field, not only what his team is doing and his players are doing, but what the other team is doing. So he's more looking at it from a um, sitting down in, uh, at a board and looking at a chess board. That's what I tell young coaches. You're playing chess, you're playing checkers. Mm -hmm. Coach makes a move, you have to figure out a counter move. They adjust here, you gotta figure out how to adjust there. Um, so once you understand that as a coach, you understand what to do as far as adjustments and reading the game. So for licensing, um, like I said, everything you bring to the table as a coach applies. So if you played college, if you played professional, you're gonna bring that in. Um, as you are now in college, you should start doing your coaching courses on the free on your free time. Mm -hmm. So but like you said, by the time you graduate, you never know what can happen along that road, you know? Um, so by the time you graduate, if things doesn't work out for you to go into college, I mean, go into the pro, you have a certain level of licensing that will get you a decent job, maybe with your college team, maybe with a pro team, whatever. Right. And as you go on, you will educate. One thing I can tell you about coaching courses, if you're really passionate about it, it, it about the game, as you do a course, you get the motivation to do the next one and the next one and the next one. Yeah. Um, so you can start with the grassroots course. You can go on to um, the website. You can just Google coaching courses. And normally in every state, there's a state organization that will have a link on your website to take you to the U.S. Mm -hmm. Soccer Federation grassroots courses. Right. Right. Um, do you and, mind? Go ahead. No, I was going to say, do you mind uh, talking about the different licensing um, that there are and where, uh, I guess, where I would start since it would be my first uh, license? I plan to do it over the summer, at least. Uh, I, again, it depends um, what uh, organization I would be doing it through. So what do you think is the, the best organization to do it through and, uh, and how long a course may take? And I think that would be, you know, interesting to understand. And, I, you know, I plan to do it as soon as I'm done with my online courses with school. Well, there's an online courses like a grassroots course. It's mm -hmm. just to wet your taste buds. And you look at videos, you answer questions, and it starts there. It's called the grassroots, right? And from there you go and you'll do your, um, your, your F license, which is kind of like the grassroots, and then you will do your E. And once you get to the D, the D is now broken up into two parts. Um, there's like a video session you do, and um, so they call it D1 and D2, um, not to be confused with, with, with college. Right, um, right. But the course is called D1. So it's two parts of the D course. And um, so one is more like, um, like online stuff. And the second part, we actually go on the field and somebody will videotape a session and you go on the field with an A licensed coach and they kind of like evaluate your session and help you through and you video and you send in that video um, back to US soccer or um, they have other, they have other United soccer coaches. They're mm -hmm. like organizations in some States. They are not recognized by the youth governing body there. And for Florida, of course, you know, it's FYSA. FYSA only recognizes the, um, U S soccer federation courses and licensing. Okay. Um, okay. I want to, this is just my opinion, education and information is important um so u.s soccer they have their methodology and their philosophy behind what they do and united soccer coaches has their philosophy and methodology of what they do as well i'm saying that to say this to me there's two ways to play soccer football the right way and the wrong way now the German the German method of people oh you 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 play the German style or you play the Spanish style like La Liga or you play this and that that's just tweaks because everywhere you go in the world you have to play defense you have to play offense and there's transition in the game so in between offense and defense that's transition when you have the ball you're on offense when you don't have the ball you that's across the board how you achieve those things is where you say it's the German style, it's the Spanish style, it's the American style, blah, blah, blah. So the foundation is the same across the board. It's just different ideas. And when I look at 
United Soccer Coaches of America and I look at US Soccer Federation or even a UEFA course, there's a lot of similarities, but then they kind of veer off into their own uh, psychology of the game. Right. Okay. Right. So I don't want people to get, oh, well, they don't have these courses here. Can I still do something to further my education? And that's what coaching courses are. It's educating you how to coach the game. Now, in your area, a lot of college coaches, which is kind of contradictory, a lot of college coaches where MLS players come from, they have the United Soccer Coaches of America licensing. Um, they used to be called NSCAA. Okay. Um, and they're the ones that have the big convention in America. They have one of the biggest con soccer conventions in the world that happens either in Kansas City, California, Philadelphia, or Baltimore, Maryland. Those are the four cities they have it in. For now, they might change, but for now. And even the U.S. Soccer Federation people goes to that convention. So that further qualifies and say, well, we, not agree, we might not agree with everything you're doing in your courses, but we agree with most of them because you're there at their convention, mm -hmm. mm. if you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying. So in my case, I have both sets of courses. I have U.S. Soccer Federation courses under my belt, and I have United Soccer uh, Coaches um, coaching education under my belt. So, um, I also did La Liga. I also did um, the, the BF, uh, which is the Bungus League. Mm -hmm. um, which is a German. That's very so interesting. Excuse me? No, yeah, I was, I was just saying that's very interesting, yeah. Yeah, because in my own opinion and my philosophy is I want to take a little bit from everyone and basically take the best here, there, and everywhere and, and prize it into my own style, my own way of coaching, which has changed over the years as I become more educated as a coach. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I might be uh, 58 years old um, but I know a lot of coaches my age are stuck back in times where they got their last license, which was mm -hmm. maybe 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And they haven't continued educating themselves on the game. The game is ever changing and it's an evolution. You know, people are coming up with new systems of play, new ideas, different philosophies, different strategies. And um, as much as I push my players to, to keep up with the times and keep training and keep, Myself as a coach, I keep my training up to, which is getting educated and doing pod and being involved in podcasts and webinars and stuff like that. So my question, I'm sorry. No, I was gonna, okay. my question is now that you're saying um, that the game is always evolving, does that mean that are there expiration dates with your certificates that you get? And are there, um, is there always a new uh, course to take uh, every maybe few years or how does that exactly work? The A license now is where you would normally go back for what they call continuing education. So every two years you have to do that. But now they have a pro A license. U.S. Soccer Federation have what they call a pro A license. Mm -hmm. um, so on written law, you should be keeping up on your own with the change. Okay. If you want to be at the top of your game. Whether you are coaching U13 or whether you're coaching a college team, you should keep up with the changes in the game. The rules change is going to affect how you coach, mm -hmm. period. Okay, so you should be keeping up with rules changes and all these things to become that type of coach. So as a young coach or as a new coach in the game, um, as you're doing your license, you should be also paying attention to any changes in the game. Right. And, and just keeping up with the times. Um, Remember when you do a coaching course, it's a test environment. Um, every what course doesn't have a test. It's not a real world environment. Mm -hmm. It's a make believe environment, but it's to give you the basics to be able to go out there. In other words, to plan a session, you should know what your when you do a session, you, they're going to give you a topic and you plan a session around that tap, the topic and your, your session should be from, a progression from simple to complex okay for instance because when you think about life that's how we were we we, we, we as a baby we crept then we grabbed onto things and we kind of toddled and then we learn how to walk then we learn how to run so everything is a progress we go to elementary school middle school so if life is set up like that why won't you want 
your soccer training to be a progression. You know, there's no teams that came out there and like, boom, we're we are super duper. Barcelona has been around for years, but it's only within a certain time frame that they became the team, mm -hmm. you know, because there was an era where Man United, and it's right there on YouTube, Man just game show, but Man U would beat Barcelona, you know, and they had this. Mm -hmm. So it takes time, and that's another thing as a coach you have to understand. You have to be patient. You have to be patient with yourself. You have to be patient with the information you're given, and that's why it's very important to you as a coach, how to simplify the information. Right. So this even, to, even to stupid, make it stupid. Um, let, uh, it's not a real word, but stupid down the information where yeah. you're, you're coaching an 18 year old, but when you speak, a seven year old is supposed to understand it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, right. so, um, and don't ever think you should, you should not over explain. I believe you should over explain your message because that where you're sure everybody got the message right right that makes sense so just don't coach for the higher level kids on your mm -hmm. team or mm -hmm. on your team or your players the higher level players you have to you have to coach from the lowest player on your team up to the highest player not from the highest player down right that makes sense definitely now i'm remembering um you said about uh soccer education do you think that there is a certain degree out there in the college uh system today that is most beneficial for somebody who wants to become a coach in the future? Because um, I know to become a college coach, for example, to have that, um, that opportunity open, you need to have a degree, whether engineering, any, any kind of degree. You any just kind of degree, degree. correct. Mm -hmm. So which degree do you think suits best for somebody who wants to become a coach in the future? Well, anything to do with sports, but the way it the way it's out there right now they're saying any degree but mm -hmm. um if it just happens that you want to become a soccer coach at some point in time in your life and you have a degree in sports medicine of course that will help because you're going to know what to do with your players without getting your players injured what type of exercises to do so forth and so on if you have a degree in nutrition of course that will help too because now you can tell players what to eat what to what not to eat how long before a game, the night before a game, what you should eat, things like that, anything doing with nutrition. So you have to look at, um, you have to look at the game on a whole basis, what, you know, pre-season, all these things. If you're, if you're somebody studying um, science, human science, as far as how the body functions and what it does, you'll be a great coach with preseason, you're going to know how long you have to give that player time to peak, to get the peak performance. Um, and then if you want them peaking by playoffs, that's what's going to happen, you know. But with your education or your degree, you'll be able to plan that better than maybe I would or, or another coach might have some other. So that's why I said everything, everything, when you're coaching, everything applies. Even um, a good businessman, their organization, like a business, you know, they're going to have structure and stuff like that. Somebody that's military, same thing. You come out of the military or you're coming out very disciplined. Maybe you're in the Navy, the army, the Marines, you're going to be, your team is going to be very disciplined and very regimented. Mm -hmm. So it's whatever mm -hmm. you bring in from your own personal life, um, into the coaching fraternity. Um, that will shape you as a coach. You can't help it. It's part of your personality. All right. So, yeah, I guess it's uh, the best way to say, I guess, yeah, the way you said it. So just whatever, the more you can bring to the table, the better. So if you've got a you know, degree in a certain uh, field, you just bring that, whatever you learned from that field, and you can apply it to the team right. and so on. All right. That's very interesting. So what, do you, what, what is your um, point of view when it comes to, uh, connections. Do you think ha having connections is as important as having your your licenses, having your education? Again, that's bringing outside things to it. Um, myself, I know a lot of college coaches personally because I did coaching courses with them before they became college coaches. Um, some of the college coaches I know as players uh, when they played professionally. Um, um, some college coaches I know um, because of players talking about me to their college coach. So 
we get the opportunity to meet, oh yeah, I heard about you, my player, Adam talked about you and da, 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 da. So again, um, just staying humble as a coach and uh, you know, my reason for coaching is to give back to the game, first and foremost, mm -hmm. two, to give the youths in my community something to do other than hang out in the streets. Mm -hmm. Three, to be a good role model and a mentor of what a man should be in this world and try to give them principles and values to be a man, respect, being disciplined, um, working in a team environment, working well with others. Um, and these are skill sets and attributes that you will need in the real world, whether you make it as a pro player or not. You go to a big company, you're gonna to have to learn how to play ball with everybody in the company. You can't be a loner, you know what I mean? You have to respect authority, your boss, your manager, your supervisor, the director, whoever, wherever level in the company you are. So, uh, and as you know, Adam, when I talk to players about what soccer, football, I always tell them it's life. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm your boss, your team is your co-workers. Just like on your job, if you don't show up for work, you have a consequence to play. You don't show up for practice, you don't show up for game, there's a consequence to play. You know, you get rewarded, you get raises, promotion based on your performance not based on if I like you or not, mm -hmm. you know? So it, it, to me, again, in my opinion, um, football, soccer reflects real life. And there's a lot of skills. If you learn it on the football pitch, on the soccer pitch, you can take that into life. And if you're successful, you can move into life or, or transition from football life into personal life and business life very easily and also be successful there. Right, right. I'm okay. David Beckham. Mm -hmm. You know, that's 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 one of the top transitions from player that I can think about. Zinedine Zidane from player to coach. He didn't jump from player and then coaching the first team. He went through the academy. He went through the reserve team up to the first team. You see what I'm saying? So he paid his dues. Although he was one of the top players in the world, he paid his dues. Ryan Giggs is doing this. And, you know, there's others out there. You know, and that includes they, uh, their FIFA licenses. I'm, I can imagine they all took their courses as well, even course. though they were the top players in the world. Of course, you still have to do your life because, again, early what I said, as a player, you're looking at the game through a player's eyes. You're looking at just one section of the field, one section of the play. Although you might have great vision, you're not focused on the whole field all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, as a coach, you have to focus on the whole field all the time because you're looking at both teams. You're looking at if your game plan is working or not. You have to be able to tweak it when you have to. You have to be able to move players around when you think the game dictates that. You have to be able to know when to hold. I mean, there's a whole lot uh, going on. Um, player management. Okay, we have a game in two days and we're in control of this game. Let's rest my starters put in some of the uh, guys who don't get a lot of minutes and hopefully they will hold the game down and carry the game through as a win. And I'm giving my players, um, my starting players some rest. So it's not a, wear, a lot of wear and tear on their legs, on their body, on, on all that, so they can recover. Okay. So all that goes in, so it's not just going out there, hey, pass the ball, kick the ball, da, 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 da. You know, mm -hmm. especially if you're coaching in a high level league and the youth development grassroots and even in college you should be thinking that way too as a coach because there's a lot more games in a shorter space of time right so the okay. management has to come into play right so now um after hearing all of this all this information this great valuable information so after um what you said you said number one you need to have perspective understand that this is not some for most coaches a glorious uh, career uh, uh, financially where you're going to be making millions of dollars number one number two is what can you bring to the table I guess that comes down to uh, your education whether it's college education whatever degree you got and what you can offer and as well as your licenses uh, the higher the more licenses you get the I guess higher uh, ranking you are of understanding the game so what right. now let's say a player has there don't forget playing experience comes into play it should not it should not just be the only thing and a lot of players come into coaching thinking 
and they will even go to a coaching course and I've been in coaching courses with college players and they're not paying attention because in their minds, I played college, I already know the game. What, right. what, I'm just here for a piece of paper and not really absorbing the information and marinating it and mixing it with my playing experience. Okay, when my coach told me this, now I understand why he said this and that, that, that. you know, not mixing it all up and, and taking some of the old stuff and mixing it with the new stuff. I mean, to this day, I go back and I look at old games and try to say, if I was there at that moment in time coaching, what decisions would I make? Would I pull that player off at that particular time frame in the game? Things like that. So I go backwards and then I come forwards. So, you know, I keep going backwards. And so I mix the old with the new. And you being one of my ex-players, you know I did a lot of that in my training sessions, mixing, mixing the old with the new, putting a player on your back and telling you run across the field with the player on your back. I know you remember those days. Yeah, I remember. Those were good drills. Yeah, but um, so uh, playing experience is the next thing. What about coaching experience? Say, say uh, you did a little bit of some high school coaching while you were in college. Uh, maybe you got this this uh, this little this part time job at a at a club. I'm sure that all um, adds up to your credibility, and it gives you it helps you get a more understanding of coaching. You know, like uh, getting your feet wet with with this uh, local team, and you're just the assistant coach there. I'm sure that also helps. Yeah, and that was the other part I was going to interject is that I believe, and I wish I understood and knew that as a young player, um, hanging out just from hanging out to working alongside, using an experienced coach as your mentor. Mm -hmm. And if you can get, if you know of several coaches who will allow you to do that, just hanging around different, because each coach again has their own philosophy. Like so shadowing. You, yeah, shadowing, different words, shadowing, mentoring, whatever. But just being in that environment with a coach, watching how he does sessions, how he plans sessions, um, how he speaks to his players, um, um, there's some coaches out there in the world, um, not calling any names, not pointing fingers, but kind of speak to players in a disrespectful manner. Mm -hmm. In a sense, um, I'll go from as far as cursing at players. I don't think a coach should ever have a reason to curse at a player to always, and it doesn't have to do with your voice tone or anything, but um, the words you use. Mm -hmm. Adam, what's going on with you? What's wrong with you, man? You can't score a goal today? Why you keep missing? And end of conversation or end of comment, you know, where that could be something. Adam, you're making the perfect runs. You're taking the first perfect touch. You're right there in front of the goal, son. Find a corner, find an open space, put the ball away, finish. So I'm telling you, you're doing everything right except that last piece. Fix that last piece. Constructive uh, criticism. Right, right. You know what I mean? And um, I think more of that will make and I, hopefully I did that with you when I coached you and I said those things to you when I coached you um only you can say from a player that I coach if I did that or not um right. but that's my whole mindset and if I didn't I apologize but that's I always say, my I would say so I would say you did definitely learned a lot when, uh, under under uh, your team definitely for sure yeah. um so now that uh so we've got the perspective we've got Say we, we say there's a player um, or a person, I should say, he's got the perspective. He understands what he's getting into. He played college soccer at a high level, played a little bit of semi-professional or professional, has his licenses as well, a little bit of shadowing and, and coaching experience. So what's the next step? What do you think is the next step um, to, to get and, and, and get a job as a coach and to work his way up that way? What's, what do you think would be the next step? Um, <clears throat> right now, the market has more players than coaches, than good coaches, than referees, than fields. Mm -hmm. So those are the three. So it won't be a problem for you to find a job in any organization in any state. Um, it's just putting yourself out there, letting people know that you're interested in coaching. Um, and especially if you're dedicated and you, you, you're showing passion to the kids, you're going to quickly move up to be like what kids like to call that's my favorite coach you know i love him and this and that and you know you in some cases you become a father figure you become their um songboard 
you're going to hear some stuff that you really don't feel you should be hearing from kids, but they don't have anybody else to go to. And maybe they might have parents, but they don't feel comfortable talking to their parents. So you have to be that cushion, that go between, that arbitrator. And, you know, I have mended a lot of relationships with parents and kids and things like that. And, you know, getting the parent to understand the kid point of view, because they're going to come to you honest because you're an honest person with them, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe, the, you know, for whatever reason, um, cultural differences or whatever, um, their parents might be old school. Like I know your background, where you're from, you know, my background, where I couldn't do certain things. I just couldn't go talk to my parents about, but if my coach did, they'll understand because it's an adult to adult, not a kid to an adult. So, right. um, that's the other part of it that you have to understand. And it's, it, it, mm -hmm. and that's what sometimes gets stressful and stressed out coaches and stuff like that. It's not just the complaining parent. My kid is messy. How come, how dare you not playing in games or counting minutes and stuff. I mean, I have a son in the in, in the youth program right now and he comes to me, Dad, I'm not getting any playing time. I said, are you working hard? Um, the kids that are playing in front of you, are they better than you? Are they fitter than you? Are they, you know, mm -hmm. don't, I don't accept my child coming to me and saying they don't make it because one thing, a bad coach, a good coach, each coach out there wants to win. Mm -hmm. They might have different values of winning or sacrifices they want to make for that win. But at the end of the day, we all want to win. Right. Okay. Right. What we want to sacrifice for the win, that's determined by each coach. But so I said, son, I know your coach want to win. And if he can use you to win, he will. So there's something lacking that you're not doing. So you need to go have a conversation with your coach and let the coach know you're interested in more minutes. What do you need to do as a player to get more minutes on his team? So, and he's, you know, he's 11, mm -hmm. but I'm teaching him as a player, you have to have that coach player relationship and not every coach player relationship will work. And if you're trying and it doesn't work, then maybe you need to find another coach. Mm -hmm. Not saying to leave your club, but maybe another coach in the club. Maybe even if it's a lower level coach, as long as you get that understanding and that coach is training you and it's mo and that coach is motivating you to be a better player, then so be it, because as I was having a conversation earlier, like when you first called me, I told you I was on this conference call, that's what it was, that's what it was about. Mm -hmm. It was about getting that relationship between player and coach where, and coaches say that all the time, my players, I can tell them run through that brick wall and they will without even questioning it. Mm -hmm. Once that relationship, and for the folks out there, Adam was that kind of player. Um, Adam would come to me after every practice and ask me, coach, how did I do? What can I improve on? And the next day I would have my other team coaching. Adam's team was now there. And who will I see on the pitch in some corner with a ball? It was Adam. And I'm saying that all, to all the younger players who might watch this and coaches, do not squash passion. There's none of us out here. And I challenge top coaches and Jurgen Klopp and all of them have said it. You cannot coach passion. The people have to come with desire, passion, and motivation in their hearts. And that's what you can work with. And players like that will take off. Once they hit that, that realization, that reasoning of the game, they're going to they're take off on their own because they're the ones that are going to train on their own. They're the ones going to do all that extra work on their own to make themselves better and in turn make your team better. Right. So if you see that in a player, don't dismiss them because they might not have the talent at that moment in time. That's where you're there. You here, you're there to to train that talent and, and and cultivate that talent and season that talent and bring it up. Um, cream rises to the top. Well, you know, mix it up and 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 bring that cream up to the top. So I wanted to say that about Adam, and and I'm so um, happy and pleased in where Adam's career is right now, and knowing that I had a little part. <laughs> and him and his development and get him there. But I always knew he would make it from day one when, when other people didn't see it. I, I always knew and um, I believed in Adam and I always said encouraging words to Adam. Um, even sometimes when I'm saying stuff, he might not have liked what I said, but he was somebody never turned up his nose or made any kind of faces. He just said, okay, coach, I'm going to work on that. Okay, coach, I'm going to 
I'm going to pay attention to this. And I would see him doing it. I'll see him go out there and work on it. So um, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. I really do. You know, I just, you know, do my best. And uh, honestly, I'm just really interested in, in the coaching world. Uh, I honestly, I can't wait until I start working on my first license, which is the F license, I believe, right? So, well, yeah, the, they call it the grassroots now, yeah, but it's yeah. So that's what I'm going to keep changing the names, on. guys. Too, they, you know, you just have to go on 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 the website and look. But they 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 keep like they only had one D license. Now it's, it's they broke it up into two parts. They only had one A license. Now you have the regular A and the pro A. Right. And I think somewhere I saw there's a college coaching course now and. There's a high school course. Uh, right. Yeah, but so, as long as I'm with the U.S. Soccer Federation, then I should be good. So I'm definitely No, you will be good. You will be good. But I, I just put the disclaimer out here. Do not, do not just say U.S. soccer because that's just one methodology. You mm -hmm. understand? If you truly wanted to be, to me, a, a, a top-class coach, you should look at all the different mm -hmm. um, philosophies and, and methodologies out there mm -hmm. from La Liga to Bungus League, to UEFA, because what UEFA courses and Bungus League courses are different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, anybody that's doing coaching courses um, and you have the ability even as to go on YouTube or some website and look at it, you, you can learn, you can learn. Mm -hmm. I've learned from bad coaches. Mm -hmm. You know what I learned from bad coaches? What not to do. What not to do <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly mm -hmm. so you just have to open up yourself your ears your eyes and your hearts to i'm out here to learn mm -hmm. you know i'm here to learn what to do but i'm also here to learn to learn what not to do it's like a coach will tell his players we didn't lose the game we learned mm -hmm. yeah that's going to be very interesting for me as um i i you know I, i'm interested in am i going to really like this, this i think it's going to be uh, um, a, a realization if I really do like this, if this is what I actually want to do. And I think it'll be a great way as uh, I'm a freshman going into my sophomore year. I still have another three years. So I should be able to get those licenses by the time I graduate. And so I think it's going to be a great way to dip my toes into this environment with the grassroots um, course. So I plan to start that in about three weeks, two weeks, once I finish my, uh, my online courses with school. So I can completely focus on that. And, uh, and, and yeah, so, I mean, I just wanted to wrap it up, uh, the conversation. I think it was great. I wanted to say one more thing before you wrap up. No if problem. You mind. Definitely. As a player doing coaching courses, and if you have some little youth team, little seven, eight, nine-year-olds, kids are very honest. Excuse me. Kids are very honest. So if you're coaching them and you're still playing, they're going to hold you accountable. Yeah, yeah. Well, coach, you didn't finish that goal. Or coach, you missed that pass. Or coach, you didn't control that ball. But besides your kids holding you accountable, if you're fortunate to have a, a, a little youth team, mm -hmm. you look at the game from a different perspective now, although you're still playing the game. You're going to start playing the game, but looking at it from through a coaching eyes. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be playing on the right side, but you're going to be really focused on what's going on on the left side. Why isn't that player making runs when I pick up the ball and I open my hips facing inward and I take a big touch. He knows I'm going to cross it. Why didn't he start his run to run behind the defense? But when I put in the cross, he's picking up that ball in that space behind the defense. You're mm -hmm. going to start noticing. So you're going to become a leader on your team. And the coach is probably going to rely on you because they're going to hear your comments. They're going to hear what you're saying. And they're going, all right, this person is seeing the game from a coaching perspective. So I'm going to transmit my information to the coach. To that play instead of yelling it out to mm -hmm. everyone hey adam mm -hmm. come over here for quick tell the players da, 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 da. and you now on the field will relay that, oh, that message yeah it's, it's so like your, your game will improve as far as tactically and your soccer iq is going to improve because you're now watching the game from one dimensional to a wider vaster view of the game right you know you're going to notice players getting tired you're going to notice players bending over with your hands on your knees. You're going to notice um, a player, maybe that player switch. And I allow my team, even at the age I coach, I allow them to do that without instruction. I'm mm -hmm. going to question you, but I allow them to switch. Maybe a left-footed left -footed player going on the right side and the right-footed player going on the left side, things like that. Or I might have a fast player who's playing on the wing, but the player that he's playing against is also fast. 
and they recognize that on the game, so they switch sides. Mm -hmm. Right. And they go against the slower wing back might be on the opposite side of the field or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I give my players freedom to make calls like that on the field. I will question you, and if you give me the right answer, then of course, not, you know. So I just wanted to yeah. put in that little yeah. piece. That's a, that's a good, uh, like a leadership role. Like mm -hmm. I like the way you, you like the coach would, would transmit his message through a player to then transmit it to the rest of the team. So uh, my question is, um, all right, can you hear me? Oh, no. So, yeah, I was just trying to get to the point um, where I like the way you were talking about sending the message for in, in, the, in, like, the middle of a game from coach to player to then team. So I guess that player would be, you know, the leader, the captain. How does a coach choose um, the player to be a captain? How does one become a captain on the team? That was one last question that I wanted to get to. It, uh, that's a tough one. Um, simply because every coach has their own reasoning to pick a captain. I initially pick captains based on are they responsible? Do they lead? So when I pick, when I have a new team, I'm picking a captain. I look at the hardest workers on the team, both in practice and in games. Um, mm -hmm. The guys who I don't have to tell, hey, go do this, go do that. And if you, if you, if you observe, you'll see the players who are always running to pick up the cones at the end of practice or a coach, they'll come up, hey, coach, is anything I can help you with? Those are the guys I normally pick, not normally the best player on the team, but the ones that have that leadership quality and out there working hard. Because when I say captain, I want the rest of my team to emulate the um, personality of the captain. Right, you know? right. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was just one last point I wanted to get through. Um, but besides that, honestly, it was a great conversation. Uh, I definitely learned a lot. I'm sure everybody else that's listening definitely learned a lot. Um, it was a lot, of, uh, a lot of value in this conversation, I think. And uh, I'm going to take everything into consideration. Hopefully, I'll start my licenses uh, soon, as soon as I'm done with all my uh, school courses. And, uh, yeah, once again, thank you so much for coming on. And if you have any last things you want to say, wrap it up. No, just um, make sure whatever you do in life is through passion. Um, never really go out there and do stuff only because of money. We know money is very important in this world. But just imagine how much enjoyable your, your job would be if you're doing it out of passion. In other words, if you're doing something, and millionaires have told me this, if you're doing something that you love, that you'll do for free anyway, and you're getting paid for it, how joyous could that be? It's not a test to wake up in the morning and go to work or wake up at night because you would be doing that anyway for free. So um, in life, you know, just choose something. If you're going to be a doctor, you know, care about people, care about taking care of people, you know, that's basically. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great way to look at it. Mm -hmm. no. Definitely. Well, once again, Coach uh, Ashton Baptiste, thank you again for coming over. Uh, it was a great talk. And Pleasant. that's the end of the video. Uh, go, uh, go ahead, guys. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Comment down below if you have any questions for me or Coach Ashton as well. I can always send them a message if there's anyone that has any questions or, or concerns. And thanks for listening. And I know this, one's a, this was a long one, but once again, there was a lot of information here that a lot of people can take advantage of and, and definitely learn from and apply it in their lives. Once again, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Peace. And Thank you, Adam.